I guess I don't know if starting early uh, worked out. Usually when I go, I get 
good amount of people in here, but it seems to be light, but that's okay because I can stay more focused on the emails. I appreciate everybody always being in here, but I get sidetracked a lot, so the people who send in their emails will appreciate this. Unfortunately, two emails I'm going over, both neither of the people can be here, but that's okay. I'll go over their email anyways. This video will be posted later. And that way they can watch it. So we'll see here. Um, I'm going to go over the, the first email. I should, I, gosh, I always forget to put their name up there. I just try not to have their email up there. So that way, uh, you know, I don't post their email publicly. But okay, we get a few more people in here. If you just joined in, please like the stream and leave a comment and say, hey. And I'm going to get right into this email. So... This one's a very interesting one. Uh, last year in September, the lawn started yellowing and died fairly quickly. Even in other areas of the lawn, I put out a fungicide, possibly thinking that would help. Then the course of the lawn went dormant around November, then January comes around, and the dormant grass started laying down and stayed wet for a while. I didn't think anything of it until um, I started spring cleaning, and most of the St. Augustine runners were soft and dead. Uh, here's before and after pictures and one on the CC, uh, T camera shows the beginning. So this is, uh, I took a brief look at these pictures and this is probably the most interesting one I think I've ever seen here. Um, so here's the lawn before, uh, looks great. That's some good looking grass. Love to see that. Here's another one. Um, lots of trucks. Love to see that, but also green looking grass, nice little garden area. Uh, this looks really nice. Good, even little sky background. Enjoy all of that. But <clears throat> lawn's looking good, obviously being taken care of very well. Um, and now here we can look in 2020 of September, 2022 of September. Um, a little bit of a yellow, uh, a little bit of a brown spot here. Now, just by looking at this picture now, um, this could be a lot of things. The first thing I would say at first sight would be it looks like chinch bugs. Um, again, I mean, I'm not digging down there. I'm not perfectly into it, uh, unfortunately. But first look at way this damage is starting. Um, looks like chinch bugs. The only on thing that's not quite chinch bugs would be this. Uh, now, uh, I guess the grass does it does yellow and, sh and, and stress around the edges of chinch bugs, but not this type of yellowing. This is more of a chlorosis and a uh, chlorotic yellowing into here. So a little bit different, but that's um, from what this looks like. This could possibly be the start to some chinch bugs damage. Um, and of course, this isn't playable, but then, you know, this a area kind of, Looks like it died out a bit, but and then also recovered, unless that looks like almost actually that's Bermuda grass growing back in there. But then we have a lot of, uh, of yellowing um, into this. Now, this is not, uh, the way this looks is not chinch bugs. Very ice, lots of damage next to green, some yellowing around, good sign of chinch bugs. This, not really. This is very widespread uh, damage. Um, this is more disease or burn type of damage. I would I would say into here. And it looks like some soil's been put down to help these areas to recover. Again, we're looking at video camera uh, footage here, so hard to tell. An unfortunate person can't be here, so I can't ask questions. But um, we're gonna make our best educated guesses. Um, and wow. It looks like from, I don't know when this is from, but I believe this is this is what this yard looks like recently. I mean, this is like total death here. Uh, this is really, really bad. This is one of the worst things I've ever seen. Now, so looking at this picture, I mean, there's two things I can, I can deduct from this. Hey, Chad, I've been watching your, your videos lately. Love the content. Thanks, Red. I really appreciate the comment. Thanks so much for joining us, and I really appreciate that. Uh, make sure, you know, if you give the channel a like and subscribe, that's your best way of letting me know, and I really appreciate the support. Th thank you so much. Um, but to, to, just looking at this, really only two things come to my mind. Just massive chinch bug damage that never got treated, kept putting nitrogen down on the lawn, 
or the lawn was burned with something. Um, that's my own, my only other thing I can think about is something was put down to stress and burn the lawn at too high of a rate. Um, or you didn't quite identify chinch bugs and they spread through the lawn. Again, this damage is weird, but I guess if it started from that, I maybe could still be chinch bugs. I wish I could ask more questions, but this is just quite devastating. I mean, this is just total death. Um, I mean, take all root rot. Uh, chinch bugs or burn are really all that could do something like this. I mean, this lawn looked like looked like this, and so before September, so um, the lawn went dormant. So we could say early September, um, the lawn, you know, was looking something. Maybe probably in the summer, the lawn was looking like this. This started in September, um, and I'm assuming this is probably uh, m uh, March of this year, uh, which is, this is insane. And then, send me a picture of some snails. Not really a problem. That's just some creatures in the soil there. Um, and this is the backyard. We didn't see what it looked like before. Um, that's a, that's a, man, that's a very brown looking lake. But, um... This type of damage, look at those lines on it. This this type of damage, the way it's looking, could be anything from chinch bugs, drought stress, root rot. It's tough. Those lines are kind of throwing me, almost like it was dying, like the mow lines, you know, died out, which could be a big sign of drought stress, but... It's hard for me to believe. He didn't mention anything chinch bugs in the email. So, uh, again, I don't think it would just be chinch bugs or something else playing. Hey, new old woman here, and your videos are very detailed and helpful. Oh, thanks, man. I really appreciate that. Uh, thank you so much. I'm glad you found my videos helpful and useful. Uh, make sure to keep watching, um, especially as a new homeowner. You're going to have a lot of challenges uh, with the lawn and things like that. But be patient. Keep learning. And I appreciate the support. Like and subscribe. And I appreciate that. So, I mean, I, I, it's hard for me to believe that your lawn looks like this and like this and you didn't water it enough for it. Again, I mean, that's just not lack of water alone. Maybe, you know, that's just so devastating. This, this is hard. Those lines are really throwing me off. But this is, unfortunately, this isn't a clear sight, but this might be. Now, I had to do some research and digging for this, but this might be a very rare case of a uh, disease that really not much you can do about and it's not very talked about because it's extremely, extremely rare. Um, and this is kind of the biggest indicator of that. Again, um, take all root rot, I mean, continuously watering, I, I mean... Hard for that to really happen unless you're just... And he said he put down a fungicide, which fungicide doesn't help with root rot. But I would assume he stopped slowing... For, slowed down the fertilizer because really for root rot to get really bad would be to maybe keep pumping it with just nitrogen, no potassium for the roots, and consistently watering. A fungicide, um, it's not really going to help with root rot besides the fact that fungicides have recovery agents in them and help the lawn recover better. So that, that would be that, but... That's hard to tell. I mean, this is devastating. I mean, this is this is resaw level. Your whole lawn is dead. I mean, there's a little bit in between there, but this is probably going to fill with weeds and wild Bermuda before grass ever comes back. Um, but what I am thinking that this could possibly be could be sugarcane mosaic virus in Florida turf grass. This is extremely rare, but this is about the only disease that could possibly wipe out your entire lawn like that. But the unique characteristics on it are right here in this picture. This yellowish striping. And again, from something like this, I, I'm not going to be able to tell if it's exact that yellowish striping. But you can see that kind of chlorotic yellow maybe coming in and this odd, very large pattern of lightish colored grass. I mean, 
again, it's not very a clear picture, so I'm we're really assuming a lot here, but um gosh, without much more information, I would either say you you, you let chinch bugs go out of control and you didn't do anything for chinch bugs, you didn't check or identify. Um you kept fertilizing lawn with root rot, which I don't really think that's the case, or this virus hits your lawn. Again, this is a very, very rare virus. Um, but so uh, before 2013, this virus uh, were few and far between. Um, when they did occur, cases were generally mild. In the past few years, however, um, when when was this posted? Uh, might not seeing the date here. What's going on? What's going on? Uh, uh. It's weird I don't see a date on this article, but the past few years is now confirmed in counties in North Central and South Florida. Below are answers. So what is the vi? What is the sugar? We just call it the sugarcane virus. So what is the sugarcane virus? Um, causes mosaic disease in St. Augustine grass as a viral infection. Um, the disease cannot be controlled by fungicides or other pesticides. In some cases, infection leads to severe damage. In the worst case, the disease may kill an entire lawn of all turf grass, turf grass declines. This is referred to as the lethal virus, um, the LVN. Some cultivars of St. Augustine are more at risk uh, than others. Floritam is particularly vulnerable and can um, progress LVN. This is particularly true in South Florida. Palmetto and Citra Blue are more resistant. Um, it can also affect sugarcane, Bermuda, seashore pest, pylum, bahia, and um, fountain grass. Zoysia does not, zo and zoysia does not be uh, appear to be a host. So there's a good reason for zoysia grass, even though it's harder to control. Um, but see, it, it can get total kill out. I mean, there's just from those pictures, there's not many things that can really do that. I mean, I, I like I say. Uh, Without knowing about that virus, I mean, the lawn going again from this, and this is in less than a year, six months, from this to that to that within six months, a, a mix of drought, chinch bugs, and you burn the crap out of your lawn with a bunch of products. I mean, that's that's really all I can think of, uh, you know, and it doesn't have to be a mix of all three, maybe two and two out of three in there, but... A mild mix of all those things um, could, could uh, but I, I'm going to assume, like I said, when you have a lawn like this, I'm going to assume you have a bit of knowledge that you didn't burn, um, you know, uh, I mean, if, if you didn't, if, if you, you checked and identified for chinch bugs, no chinch bugs were active, I mean, you can rule that out, that's very easy to check, um, if you may have, I think you over applied something, that can play a factor into it, to the mix, I'm sorry, my, these cats are out of control. Um, this is their hangout room, so I apologize for all this this noise, but they are out of control over here. Um, and then, and then drought, and not not watering. I mean, that that's that's the only thing that can I can really think that can do damage that fast. So um, now, what are the symptoms? Um, of the virus. The most common symptom of the disease caused by uh, SCMV is a mosaic pattern of leaf damage. Look for a blotchy line of yellow and light green on the green uh, blades of grass. These broken streaks run along the veins. By the, uh, by the fall, some lawns show LVN and begin to brown and die completely. In these cases, lawns show severe dieback by spring. I mean, this is the exact case that we're kind of having here. This is this is this is fall. This is September, and this is this is early September. This is late September to October, and kind of let it go during the winter. Not which is not a big deal. And this is the comeback in the spring. I mean, this sounds almost to the T of of uh, where am I at? Of what happened here? Um, hold on one second. almost to the T of, of what happened here. So how does this disease spread? So the virus is spread when machinery brings clippings and sap from an infected lawn to an uninfected lawn. This happened when the lawn care equipment is not disinfected between landscapes. To avoid spreading the virus, clean all um, obvious clippings and sap off all equipment. 
Pay special attention to mowers, trimmers, and shoes. Next, sterilize the equipment by spraying with a sanitizing solution, diluted bleach, alcohol, ammonia, uh, or the most com- are the most common choices. This uh, this virus also spreads by aphids. Infected sod can spread the virus too, but uh, CS. MV hasn't been found on any sod farms to date. Inspected sod farms installing it into your lawn as well as a healthy lawn is more resistant to disease than struggling ones. Please follow the best management practice to help your lawn. What should I do if I suspect my lawn has the virus? Yellow streaking are a symptom of number of turf grass diseases. Again, that's kind of, I, I think the streaking is pretty unique. Um, but before you take action, confirm is present in your turf grass. You can submit turf grass sample to testing. So, Here's the link um, to to the testing, and I'm at uh, uf slash i i uf sorry guarding solutions dot ifis. You can just type in uf sorry I'm, uf slash ifis gardening solutions, and then you go to lawn diseases, and it will be in here. But I think it's too late because, um. I mean, it looks like the damage is done because the grass that's growing back looks green and, and great, like it's trying to recover and what has been done has been done. Maybe you can get some in the backyard, but this seems to be a common thing and maybe it just didn't eat up the backyard is bad. But these lines here, um, they're, you know, that's pretty unique damage into there. So, and I would say the most unique thing on it is Again, I, I don't think that's as much. I think these long lines are the most unique. I can see this in chlorosis and things like that. If you put too much liquid fertilizer on your lawn and, and even iron stuff, it can kind of do this to the grass blade a little bit. Um, stresses out a little bit, then recovers and bounces back fine. So that's hard to say, but the streaking is pretty unique into there. Um, and I have some more more pictures of it. Um See that, and that's a mix of gray leaf spot fungus. You know, I would, I would say, but but the blotching, I, it's it's a very unique difference into there. Gray leaf spot fungus is more of this brown stuff, but the way it's streaking and blotching, and probably the large scale of it. Uh, because you know, if I saw a picture of this without knowing, I would say this is just severe brown patch fungus. But again, I think that streaking. And the blotchy makes makes a bit of difference. This is pretty unique here. Um, I don't think you would really see anything uh, other than that virus do something like that. And that and I mean, look, that's that's the die out that looks like coming back in the spring, and that's kind of what that lawn looks like. Again, I wish you know. And this is kind of what I think it looked like into the fall, and even what this backyard looks like. Uh, you know, here's the affected area. Here's an area that recovered. I don't know why. You know, this area recovered or how. It looks like the back didn't get as damaged, but this is looking like the backyard. And this is kind of looking like what it looked like in the fall. Um, I mean, look at that. I mean, that's that's it. Only, only, only that virus can do something. I don't know why it's in a line like that. I don't know. Reported viruses infected St. Augustine in southern Pasalas County. So... Um, I don't know why it goes in a line like this. I don't know too much about it. I've really never encountered or worried about it, but um, that looks like a very fast die out and kind of what he was talking about. I don't think he's you know had as many pictures because I don't, I don't you don't think this is gonna happen to your lawn, but I mean pretty similar to uh, what these these pictures uh, they sent in. I think that's the, probably the most unique features of it into there. Oh, that's about where it's... And then it kind of almost gets a... Yeah, so we can see the we can see a good a, a good difference in there. 
um, the, the, it's a, it's a very different, a different pattern. So this is going to be your great, and great leaf spot fungus attacks wet areas. So it honestly probably does tend to get a little bit of like gray leaf spot fungus. That's kind of just trying to latch on and, and jump in because of all this dead grass creates a lot of moisture. But now that we really look at, it's a blurry picture. Now that we really look at the two close up here, we can we can see the difference. Yeah, yeah, it's a pretty good. Uh, see, this is when it gets extreme. Not even then. See, I mean, there it can, but we can see the difference there. It almost has a different tint to it, and not so much in circles. So, um, man, I, I forgot this. Uh, I forgot this name of who sent this in because I forgot to put names on things. Um, but I believe you got the sugarcane virus here, uh, and it's uh, and it did total lawn die out. I mean, that's that's it. Uh, you know, most of these people watching, especially if you're new in here, I mean, is this something to worry about? <sighs> pretty rare. I mean, pretty pretty rare. I don't think something like this happens, but and there's no um, treatment for it. Um, so. I don't know what he could have done differently, even if, if we identified this at this stage. He applied a fungicide, um, but the University of Florida really had no answers. It said there's no no fungicides or pesticides you can use. My only thing would be load the lawn up with potassium and humic acids to help the roots in the soil and help the lawn try to fight it off. Um I guess that's it. So even if you did have something like this happen to your yard, and it's, I think it's more of a fall issue, I don't have any answers. And, and again, I for, I'm sorry. I apologize. I don't. I didn't put your name up here. Who sent this in? But I, I would resolve this yard. Um, I mean, you're just gonna get weeds to fill in. Could it come back? Maybe. Uh, it would depend how it's doing now and how quickly it's come along. But uh, you're gonna have a lot of thatch. Um, you could possibly maybe get the disease again. Um, uh, there's just so many unanswered things. Um, I just think letting this fill in would be more of a mess than it's worth. And I think it would need to be resodded and uh, I would resod in my opinion. Ideally, just resod both, but let, let's be, you know, I can be a little more realistic here. I would just resod this. This is awfully dead, and this is horrendous. Uh, there is a lot of green coming back, though, so I I, I don't know. Um, but I wouldn't do heavy fertilizers, lots of the sun. It would need a lot of water, aerations, lots of humic, lots of potassium, little bits, amounts of nitrogen, like shrub fertilizer. Maybe even palm fertilizer would, would work well a low phosphorus palm fertilizer. Um, but again, my concern would be wild Bermuda torpedo grass and things like that filling in before the grass recovers. If you were to let anything try to recover, it would be this backyard. And what you would do is rake out as much of the dead as you could, apply a thick layer of command soil or black cow and sand mix. Command's definitely preferred. Um, and then... You could probably get away with doing your normal fertilization program. I'm always a big recommendation of humic acids and things like that. So I think that would be the go-to there. But uh, the, the back's a lot more likely to recover. And maybe wait, wait to see how things do in the next few months here. Um, but I, I don't think the University of Florida really said... Uh, again, this is take-all root rot. I... I I just don't see it happening over your whole lawn. That's Bermuda grass. I just don't see something like that happening in the, over the whole lawn. I mean, the spot, the starting spots look similar, but and I mean, the, the disease killing the grass. So your roots are going to look pretty bad anyway. So I, I, I just I don't see it being it. But uh, but this this sugar cane. Um, Mosaic virus. I think that's it. And we do to report is available. So ask IFAS. Um, but it really doesn't tell you anything unless we can. 
Oh, history, symptoms. Dude, that looks like your lawn. What happened? I mean, and crazy fast. Casual agent disease spread management. So, plant was resist for viral. Most severe symptoms in this recent epidemic have been observed on Floritam St. Augustine. Uh, and man, appreciate the content you put out. What is a good way to prevent yellow nut sedge weed from infecting my St. Augustine um, yard? So, uh, appreciate. Th thanks so much for the comment. I appreciate you supporting me. And thanks for asking this question. So, uh, sedge, uh, yellow nut sedge is, is is like I think some of the toughest sedge. Probably besides globe sedge. I'd say globe sedge is the toughest sedge. Yellow nut sedge is tough and, and all sedges are. So one thing you're going to need a sedge herbicide to treat it. But uh, prevention is going to be pre-emergence. Now here's the trick though. Sedge is a water weed. So it loves to grow in wet areas. So if you have a lot of sedge, the area is probably holding too much moisture. Now here's the thing. If the, if the lawn is thin, the thin lawn is really causing... Um, the thin lawn is causing the sedge to be able to grow, uh, but also it could be thin because of too much moisture. Now, here's the thing. There's a lot of information here. Pre-emergence don't work well in thin areas. Um, so, uh, sorry, pre-emergence don't, you shouldn't apply pre-emergence in thin areas because it won't allow the grass to grow. Oh, so if the area is thin, don't apply a pre-emergent. If the area is wet, you can still apply pre-emergent, but pre-emergence don't look don't work well in wet areas. They wear down very fast. But pre-emergent is the best way to get control of sedge. So that's a good way. So if you have a wet area, fix that drainage. If it's thin, get the area thickened up. Um, but you're going to need to treat it. So uh, most pre-emergents will be fine. Um... But this, this is what you're going to want here to treat the sedge. This is not prevention. This is only treatment. But you're going to have to get control. And I know $156. This will, if you have a lot of sedge and constantly battling with it, this is what you're going to want because sedge just won't go away. But this is going to last you a long time. And this is why I'm, this is one of my favorite things to use. Again, always read the label. Make sure this, I know this is good for St. Augustine turf, but take some time, open the label, read it, read the rates, make sure it's good for your turf and everything like that. But my, it's my, it's one of the best uh, uh, sedge herbicides to use. You're going to want to use a surfactant with it. But also when you buy this bottle, it comes with a pre-mixer. This little mixer is really cool here because see it has three and it's upside down, but it has uh, three lines on it. And that's how much, that's the low rate, the mid rate, and the high rate per gallon. So what you're going to want, so what you do is, is you'll just squeeze the bottle and you can either squeeze it to the low, mid, or high rate. And that's how many you're going to use per gallon. So if you're mixing a three gallon backpack, you'll, you'll do, and I would just do mid rate to start, get comfortable, especially if you're not using it. Um, you know, uh, you'll mix, you'll squeeze that up to the middle bar, tip it in three times this is just for one gallon each. So if you're doing three, you'll, you'll mix to the 0.23 line, squirt to 0.23, pour in, squirt to 0.23, pour in, squirt to 0.23, do that three times for three gallons. So it's really simple to use. The mixing's really good, but always check the label and make sure what you need to use uh, there. But that's going to be your, your best to treat it with and then getting rid of moisture and using pre-emergence and getting along thick is going to be your best way. So I hope that information helps. New Seville getting installed tomorrow. Do you recommend applying a fungicide as preventative due to the amount of watering that goes into establishing new sod? How long should I wait to apply? No, don't do not do a fungicide as a preventative. Don't worry about that. Um, you know, now's a good time. If you start to get a little bit of gray leaf spot fungus, it takes a lot to really start to do some damage. So if you see a little bit, I wouldn't worry. But if it starts to get to a level, uh, you know, like this over here or even like this, then you can apply, you can apply fungicide to newer sod. Um, but I just wouldn't recommend it. I like to leave new sod fresh for 30 days. Just go with the watering. You start to see some gray leaf spot fungus. Use a light fungicide. Be very careful. Um, 
and then just try to go that route after 30 days. But fungicides don't work well, really, as a preventative. Now, if you get brown patch fungus, which is in the fall really bad, and you know it, and you know around what time it comes up, that's kind of more effective. But be careful with new sod. Um, gray leaf spot fungus works very slow and starts from the top of the blade down, so it's really hard for it to do a lot of damage. So I would ideally do nothing until you see it. MDVA, hey, love your stuff. I hope that helps. Uh, right, thanks. Uh, thanks for the question. Um, hey, I love your stuff. Can I send pics of my lawn? It's a hot mess. It's like all weeds and suffered a ton from drought last year. Not sure what I had to do at this point. I'm a renter, so I'd rather spend time over money. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, send them. Um, there's a link um, in the description of my YouTube channel is my email. It's turforganics904 at gmail.com. So just go to the, the, the link or description of my channel um, in my emails there. Email me pics, and next Wednesday I'll go over them just like I was going over those other pictures there. So, and man, no, no problem, man. Um, hope that helps get that sent under control, treat it early, um, because it will spread fast and rapidly. And now's a good time when temperatures are cooler. Um, how do you feel about the product preen, both with and without plant food? Um, uh, I, I think preen is, uh, is more a, uh, preen herbicide. Uh, as a pre-emergent year, do they have it for the lawn? Is this what you... Extended weed control. I think this one's for mulch beds here. Just around 600 plants and flower beds, trees. Yeah, so preen's more for, for landscape. Um... No, four beds. Oh, yeah, Preen's fine. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, it's it's uh, the active ingredient, I believe, on it is... Where's the label? Give me that label. Um, oh, yeah, Preen, I mean, Preen's fine for beds. It's a good... There we go. It's a good, easy homeowner product to use. It's just got a, a low active ingredient, so it's kind of safe. Anything you recommend that's better? Um, thing is, I mean, you're gonna want to go if you if you get anything that's better, it's gonna be here on Do My Own. But I mean, the, the, the price difference is going to be insane. Let me make sure. Turf grass, ornamental, landscape. Oh, is this a... I think this is just a herbicide, though. Put on death me and let me... Yeah, oh, this is this is a a uh, a granular herbicide here. I mean, I I think preen for the the bang for your buck. I think preen's gonna want to be the way to go here. Uh, the, these are pretty expensive, and the active isn't too much too much higher on there. So I I I wouldn't be too concerned. I would stick with the preen. Uh, Blocks weeds for six months guaranteed. Don't believe that crap. Apply it every two months and you're good to go. And read the label and make sure that the label approves of that. Um, but it ain't going to block weeds for six months. That's a guarantee. Um, got it. Going to take some pics and send it to you. Appreciate it. Yep, yeah, man, no problem. Um, again, I, I'll get to your email. I'm busy during the week. I try to get to them on the weekends or Monday and Tuesday. So I'll ask you more questions. The more pics you send, the better. And then I'll, I'll come in and go over it live. Dixie, uh, enjoy the lawn content. I'm a lawn newbie here. All, all the info helps. Oh, Dixie, well, I'm glad you're here and I'm glad you found the content useful. I really appreciate it. Thanks for the comment and the support. Um, anything you recommend that's better? Oh, I went over that. I like the idea of granular product for the beds. I can just start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gra so pre-emergent works fine granular as well in the turf. Um, so there's not a lot of granular. Granular works well for fertilizer and for pre-emergence. Anything and fungicides. Fungicides, uh, pre-emergence, 
and fertilizer is fine in granular form. Pests and weeds, there, there's some pest is okay with granular. Weeds are a must liquid. Uh, Post-emergent, so actively treating the weeds. So, but, uh, yep, yeah, I think uh, their pre, the pre would be fine there. Um, Chad, I'm going to be following your fertilizer schedule this year. I'm going to be applying three pounds of nitrogen for this year. Is that too little? I live in New Samaria Beach area. Um, are you talking about pounds per thousand? Um, or three pounds overall in one application? I know that's kind of a tough question um, to uh let me know if you have okay uh yes on the per thousand so i mean that's the o over the year that's gonna be uh pounds per 1k yeah that's pretty much like the max limit there um and you you could probably do uh you know a, uh yeah you wouldn't have to do three but i mean i think that's fine and as long as you're getting that that I would do like half a pound to a pound in the spring and that other bit slowly through the summer and then another good half a pound in the fall. So as long as they're not quick consecutively and make sure they're slower release. The only time you want it that like a 50% quick release one time in the spring is fine. Make sure the rest is a low amount, slow release, spoon feed it or else you're going to get way too much thatch using, um, using it quick here. And I'll show you one of the best, uh, products out I have found is um uh, this fertilizer here is uh, uh someone recommended it last week on the live stream oh that's not it that's just humic acid which that's fine humic acid's good um is this it? No, that's more just humic acid. Here it is. So you can get away if you use something like this, and this is to anybody. This is one of the best fertilizers there are here. Um, now it comes with a uh, quite a price. I mean, forty. $45 for 5,000 square feet is not too bad. If you have a bigger lawn, 90 bucks, you know, for your spring fertilization. That's steep. But this has everything you can, you need in it. Um, I'm going to use Sunnyland 24011. That's fine. 15015 and 80. Yeah, that's fine. The only thing. For the winter, so I'd like to see more potassium. Potassium gets picked up and does not stay in the soil for very long. Um, so you're gonna need to uh, you're gonna need to get something. Now the eight zero ten is fine, but I would get some potash with that, like a zero zero thirty to zero zero fifty. Um, but if you want to knock down that nitrogen with a great long lasting result, because some people have blackouts and things like that. Um, this is a great product to use because it's got humic acid and everything in it. So it's a 1648, and this 1648 will get you as good results as that 24011. But with the humic acid and micronutrients, it should last longer. Um, but this comes at a very steep price. But that humic acid will really, really allow. Um, and to even with like 15015 is fine. I mean, as long as it's slow release, that that's that's heavy. But I, I, you would benefit your soil longer term if you just used. If I had it earlier, if you got yourself a bag of this, you could use a lot less nitrogen. Um, I would recommend more in the summertime. Again, the 15015 is not a wrong move, but it is a lot of nitrogen and, and can create thatch. So if you add this humic acid, you could just apply some micronutrients um, and through the summer and things like that. So uh, this is something that really, really, the thing about this is like a steroid to the fertilizer. So if you use a lot of this and get your lawn rich with humates, you can use a lower amount of fertilizers, but your programs, it, it's, it's not bad at all. Your lawn's going to look really good. 
be spraying human control. Yeah, then you're fine. You got it. You got it all together. You're doing all that. You you you've got it working out. Stick with stick stick with run that program this year and stick with that. I I I you're 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 doing everything right. Um, and you should absolutely see the results. If anything in the future. Um, you could just back off the nitrogen because it may just not be as needed, especially if this is your first year doing humic, fulvic, and sea kelp, that's fine. But that type of stuff stays and builds within the soil. So in the next year, 24-0-11, I mean, that's going to, your, your spring nitrogen is a must. But I think through the summer and future, you could back off the nitrogen, which hopefully should save you money. Um, that That's the main thing. So I think in the future you could, but you, you're going to run great and your lawn's going to be amazing. I'm waiting for our last freeze before we fertilize on my sandwich and grass. Great idea, uh, Junior. Uh, we Our soil temperatures have cooled down a lot. We've got a cold front coming in. Um, you know, we start fertilizing our customers' lawns in March April, but if I have the choice, I would choose April. The problem is, is if I wait till after, if I do May, it's way too late. So having a, a company and a service makes it tough because uh, late March, early April is probably the perfect time in North Florida or March earlier mid early march is a little too early and um, mid to late april is a little too late uh, but that's kind of the downside of having a service so you as a homeowner have the ability to get those nutrients down at the proper timing which is great oh gosh where was i with all this so i mean we, we i covered this e email really well this was a really uh rare disease that killed that is what i'm my conclusion i don't have all the information it's not a guarantee but everything i've read that um this really rare virus uh unfortunately destroyed this whole guy's lawn in less than six months and um uh really yeah you're in texas okay so just monitor in texas your soil temperatures um, six, 65 to 70. And like you said, make sure your last freeze is, is, is absolutely done. Um, and your soil temperatures are going to be consistently at least above 65. And you can check that out by Greencast. Just type in on Google Greencast soil temperature map. It'll come up, type in your area. It'll read you your soil temperatures. But yeah, so unfortunately, this guy got a very rare uh, virus. I believe sugarcane mosaic virus. Uh, his lawn's pretty much shot. I kind of recommended resodding. I thought it could possibly recover, um, but it could probably have problems down the road, and, and I don't know if the virus could come back there. Um, he's going to have to watch this stream and get me some more information. And then I said the back could possibly recover a lot of soil and things like that, but sodding might be the best. And again, I don't know how much that virus can come back. Uh, I do have one more email here to go over. Um, let's check this one out. Again, I forgot to put the name, so... Uh, I'm sorry I don't have the name up, but I know this may be a shot in the dark, but I've been watching your videos and I, um, and I am trying to figure out what happened to our grass. We live outside your service area or else I would have called for you to come to look at it in person. We just bought our home in October 2022. Congratulations on the home. And I don't recall the grass being this damaged. Um, is the best way I could put it. We have certain areas that are dark lush, but can't seem to figure out what is going on with the rest of the yard. I've included some pictures of certain spots in there, um, in the yard that we seem to be having trouble. I hope you could at least help give us some direction on what to do. I have gone at, out to the yard looking to see if there's any sod webworms and chinch bugs, but I can't seem to find anything. Um, we don't have any ant piles in the yard either, so I'm completely confused on what we can try to get a healthy um, heading into the summer. Also, all these photos are taken where the sun hits the yard all day long. Not sure if that helped explain what's going on. Thanks for taking your time to read this email. Um, Awesome, Junior. Thanks for the subscription, man. I appreciate it. Liking my videos and subscribing is the best way you can thank me, and I appreciate it more than anything. So thank you so much, man. More, more, than, um, more than happy to help. Um, so this is the customer's lawn here. Um, you know, a lot of people, this is, this is a pretty rough spot here. Uh, this is struggling, and it looks to have a lot of of weeds can i zoom in i don't know what i'm doing um looks to have a lot of weeds here that could be a tough part uh very yellow lacking nutrients in here random green spots that's what i see a lot in new builds uh looks like lots of sedge weed possibly uh thin and bare areas but a decent amount of grass into here same thing i mean this can be um 
if you have dogs, I mean, this could be dog urine, but I see this a lot where there's just natural pockets of nutrients in the soil and it's kind of just grabbing and picking them up so they're healthy, but how small they are, could be dog urine, could be both. So this lawn's really, uh, this is pretty common what I see in new builds. Um, and I'm, I'm assuming you're really doing nothing to the lawn. Areas like this are, are struggling a lot and you have a lot of sedge weed. That's where, uh, uh, I got rid of the dismiss, didn't I? That's where this could come in handy, getting getting this treated here. Again, it is 156 a bottle. It will last you a long time, and it has a mixer right on it. So if you go back in my video, I explain how to mix this. But that can help you get rid of the sedge weeds there. And then for the other weeds in the lawn... You're gonna wanna, you always wanna read the label of these products to kind of get the, uh, oh my goodness. I'm having a brain fart here. There we go, gosh. Um, I mean, yeah, so you're gonna spend $300 in weed control. Uh, you don't have to at all. But if you're really looking at doing yourself and getting control of some of these weeds, this will get the broadleaf weeds under control, and that other herbicide will get the sedge. Now, a gallon will last you a long time. These products will last you, uh, again, read the label and check the, the shelf life, but you'll probably two to three years. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like they come in smaller sizes, so that's what you're getting out of them. Um, you know, that's a, a, ga a gallon is 152 and then sedge that that should last you several years as long as the shelf life is that long um but obviously i think there's a lack of water going on too um so make sure again these are full sun areas they seem to be struggling a lot of this where the damage is very small looks like drought stress uh well drought damage at this point but was drought stress and again you probably adopted into a lawn like this and maybe it was a lot rainier and it was probably maybe the people before you had a company where you don't now um so it's really just lacking nutrients and when it gets this bad not being fertilized that's obviously means the soil is fairly poor so it needs to be fertilized to kind of look better. So make sure you're watering. I have a video on watering, so check that out. But long times, less days. You need two to three weeks in the summertime, especially in full sun areas. 30 to 50 minutes per lawn zone, depending. Um, please check out my other videos on like watering and mowing. And that will get you a more detailed description of that. But the short term is it long times, less days, two to three weeks in your full sun areas in the summer. Um, but again, I got more video, more details about that. But... What you're going to need to do um, in, in these areas, again, those those will help you get those weeds treated. You'll, you'll mix those into a backpack and spot treat the weeds. But a huge thing is a lot of this soil is compacted. So it looks like, again, a lot of this area kind of dried up. Um, and now the grass is trying to come and recover. So the area, the, the soil is really compacted and that's part of your unevenness. So getting a nice, good aeration in will be a big step. Again, you may... You're probably going to have to do an aeration every spring for the next two to three years to really help this lawn balance back. It's depending on the soil. You know, if I could take a soil probe, I could get you a lot more information, but without looking at the soil and knowing, I mean, we know it's sandy, crappy soil, so that's, that's already assumed. Um, but without really looking at it, knowing myself, I would expect two to three aerations every spring for the next year, just one aeration, a spring in the year. And then what you're going to want to apply after that. Um, you're going to need to give it some good nutrients. Again, these weeds are going to love the nutrients as well. So you're going to need to be spot treating these weeds once a month or something like that. Again, I know it's kind of a lot of information. I don't know, you know, how new you are into it and spot treating and treating the weeds gets a little bit out of control. My last live stream went over mixing, so I'd recommend checking that out if that's something you're involved in. But even if you're not going to start treating the weeds, you can do an aeration. And then what I would get down is some of, um, especially where you're really uh, uh, having trouble, is get a bag of this humic acid. Um, again, this really isn't a fertilizers. There we go. It can be blended with fertilizer you stand alone. This will kind of amend the soil. Uh, let me, um... Uh, 
blah blah blah. I mean, we went to write it, but I, I like to see the visuals. Where's where is the visuals? Where is the visuals? That's not grass, though. I mean, so ah, it's a little too nerdy there. I was trying to find. Man, I should have saved that picture, I guess. So I found a really good picture of kind of how humic works its way through the soil and and kind of what it does. Um, I mean, you know, here is, you can read lists of benefits, but here we go. Maybe, oh gosh, I'm clicking into all kinds of things now, but I don't know if you can see this well, but you know, that's, that, that's like a normal plant. That's it with humic acid. It just allows the nutrients pretty much to be more available and sticks them in that top layer of the soil. So you can think about humic acid as a complement to the nutrients you're going to use. And it's more of a soil amendment rather than a nutrient. Um, so that's, that's going to give you long-term gains here. Um, and that's going to really help. Uh, it's going to help it uptake water and nutrients. You're going to get a lot more value, especially out of it. Uh, we're talking seven down. Now, this covers 40,000 square feet. Your backyard I saw is like 2,500. So th this bag will last you a while as well. So, I mean, you're looking at using, um, you know, a pound per thousand. So you're going to use one pound per thousand square feet. So two pounds of this over the backyard. Uh, again, read the label and check that. You could probably do up to two pounds per thousand. But I like doing a pound per thousand. for And, and, and humic's not like a nutrient fertilizer. So uh, one, this is not something that's going to harm the environment. And two, so this is something you can do every single month. This is a soil amendment. This will be complementing the fertilizers. And then I recommend a uh, an Anderson... Um, or sorry, uh, a sunny land, sunny land makes good fertilizer. So a 24011, kind of what Red Stripe has here in the chat, um, where he's using the, uh, 24011, um, and a 15015, um, though that would be two good fertilizers, uh, or I would get, um, to make it simple, this has a bunch of all of that in there. This is a 1648 fertilizer. I would apply this directly after an aeration at the recommended label rates. Um, I would do this this humic acid right away. I would do the humic, uh, oh gosh, I'm losing everything on here. I'm out of control. Okay, these two. So this can be applied ASAP right away. First thing you should buy right here. And then just keep putting out a pound per thousand every single month until this bag's gone. Um, that'll just be beneficial, beneficial. This actually has fertilizer nutrients in it. You're going to want to do the 16-4-8 probably about one time or 24 0 11 one time as well at the, at the recommended label rate. Get a good boost of nutrients. Get it going. Now, what you're going to do is for you, I like using something like the 15 0 15 throughout the summer because you're trying to get a lawn to recover. We're not maintaining a yard now. When you're maintaining a lawn, we can really back off on what we're using and, and spoon through through the summer. But you're going to need to give a bit more um, for these, these years that you're trying to recover the lawn. Hopefully, we can get a lot of progress in the first year. Um, doing those aerations will help. But so the 16-4-8... That'll be great to do right after the aeration. Don't do it before. Um, if you can't get an aeration in, go ahead and do the 16-4-A, but please, aeration will be crucial to the recovery of those, those areas. And then also what you're going to want to do is top dress uh, a soil in the thin and bare areas. Over the whole lawn's ideal. That's a little bit unrealistic, let's be honest, especially when you're when you're spending money like this on these nutrients and things like that. Um, so do that and then go to Sunnyland um, and get some of... Um, Let's see what they got. So that's 24011. If you don't want to get the Anderson with the humic acid, that's going to be your great starter. Um, this is a pretty big bag. Covers almost 20,000, 17,500 square feet. So don't overuse your fertilizer. I, I show, again, I have a video on here how to measure a lawn and figure out how much to use. So make sure, so make sure you're doing your measurements here. And then... Um, 
what what else we got? We got the all natural. We got a sixteen oh eight, um, a six six six. Um, you know, this is this this wouldn't be bad too. Uh, uh, doing with your humic acid in the summer. It's a little bit lighter than I would like. Um, a little too much phosphate and not really enough uh nitrogen into there. Um, ten ten ten. It's high on the phosphate. I don't mind doing a 10-10-10. Um, also organic granulars, that's good. 10-10-10 maybe once through the summer is okay, but I'd like to find something you could kind of consistently use. Um, I, I would say this is your best without overloading. So we have to really be careful with the phosphates. Uh, it does help your lawn, but we have to be careful to the environment. I don't like really anything using more than a four on the phosphates there. Um, but again, one application of like a 10, 10, 10 would work, but we're starting to get a little confusing. I like to kind of keep it simple. So I would kind of uh, of go with, with what Red Stripe's program is, but but you'll just need to use it at, at, at uh, where I don't know what Red Stripe's lawn looks like. Red Tripe. I come on calling you Red Stripe. I'll just call you Red. I don't know what Red's lawn directly looks like, but if his lawn's in good shape, what he's doing works, but the rates he's going to be needing to use is not a lot. You'll be needing to do a uh, full rate of of the 24-0-11, which everyone should do that. But then I would do 15 0, 15 every other month at a normal rate for the first year. Uh, we don't want to start overloading and create that. Don't get this weed and feed and crap. Um, don't do pre-emergence, no weed and feed. If you're going to do the weeds, just do the liquids like I showed you or get a liquid from the store at a way cheaper price. But go go liquids on there. So that will be a good way. Aeration is going to be key. And this humic acid is going to be extreme. Oh my gosh. This humic acid. It doesn't have to be exactly this, but it's just got to be humic acid. But this humic acid is going to be extremely, extremely important. Um on on helping that soil amend and getting the best out of your fertilizer. So you're spending a lot of money on these nutrients and this pretty much guarantee, I guess be careful saying guarantee, but this this is a lot more likely that you'll get more bang out of your buck and the nutrients will transfer to the plant um, and you'll get better root system, better results. And then getting that watering and mowing right. Mow it, check out my, my video on watering and mowing, but long times, less days and mowing four inches or higher is really going to help. And then... I have my videos called how to uh, fill in uh, uh, how to fill in thin and bare areas. That will show you for for areas like this, that, and this. After the aeration, again, aeration is key first to here, and even areas like this, you're gonna want to put down um, some soil. A good Anywhere from one to three inches. I know three sounds like a lot, but I promise it'll really help. And then command is going to be... What's command? Oh, I didn't know command had one M. I've been spelling it wrong. I don't know if they're... You can't get it like straight from then. But this command soil, it's it, again, it is expensive, but this is going to be perfect. I mean, this is the best soil money can buy. And it's made in Florida for Florida. I'm going to tour the plant this spring. Hopefully, they're going to let me film. And if they do, I'm going to post it to my YouTube channel, ask them questions and show this. But to anybody, if you have thin and bare spots in your lawn, don't leave them alone. They need soil. Command is the best soil you can absolutely use. You're going to get five. This is this command soil is an investment. You're going to get five to 10 years of results and you're going to have to use less water, less nutrients. I mean, this builds the organic matter, helps the roots. This mixed with the humic acid is going to make your lawn so sustainable. And again, these are slow processes that happens over time, but these are absolutely taking the right steps. Now, again, this is a lot of money. This is going to start getting expensive and if it gets out of control, when you that, watch that how to fill in thin and bare areas video, you can use black cow and sand mix. I call it the ghetto command. Um, it's a lot cheaper. It can still be effective, but it's nowhere on near on the level of command soil. But doing some soil is better than doing nothing at all. And please don't just do straight sand. When you have the opportunity to, to actually start to change the composition of the soil, please, please use it. So um, in the short term, Aerations, number one. Humic acid, number two. 
filling in the thin and bare areas with command soil or at least black cow and leveling sand mixed. What am I on? Number three. Um, 24-0-11, number four. 15 0 15 number five and then you can just use potassium and things in the winter um and then keep applying that humic acid again you can do um instead of 24 0 11 you can do uh oh my goodness oh my goodness you can use this 16 4 8 um let me see that's 45 what's let's see this pricing here because i know price is important especially See, so this covers uh, almost three times the amount and is a little bit cheaper than this. But this is some of the best blends there are. This this fertilizer is crazy. So if you're real deal about – and again, this is expensive at first. But if you invest – and this is anybody with a lawn looking like this or even spots looking like, like this or that uh, or that – if you invest into these soils and these nutrients and this humic acid, the 24011, um, check Home Depot for 1648. 1648 is great. I love a good 1648. Um, you know, again, that that, that that's a fine um, uh, for oh that we were just going over. Yeah, if Home Depot has that, that that's really awesome. That Home Depot would would just have that that Anderson 16. I think Rob, I think you're the one who showed me it. If I'm if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, but I really looked into that fertilizer and it's great. Um, but this is, this is to anybody. Humic acids, long, expensive, long-term investment, command soil. The only thing that's not a long-term investment into your lawn, the 1648 with humic and micros is a little bit of an investment, but it is a big amount of fertilizer. But doing 24011, 15015, those are great. Those are nutrients, but those wear out through the soil. Those are getting you two it's kind of a big window two to six months of results in your lawn that really depends on a lot of factors so that is uh, it's the lesco brand yeah and and okay so yeah sixteen four eight the lesco brand that that's fine as, as as well um i like getting a little bit of phosphate in there um but like i said four is kind of the max you want to use and use that phosphate really one time again maybe a shrub fertilizer once when you're trying to get those thin and bare areas to fill in but be, please be careful of your phosphate numbers check your local restrictions and things like that counties have their own rules and laws but we do have to be really careful with the amount of phosphates and using the humic acid traps those nutrients in there so it can also um really help the environment as in not letting your your fertilizers and things leach out so we want to do this right but we also do want to be responsible and that's why i hype i harp on using those soils doing aerations and humic acids. All those things are long-term investments into your lawn. They don't just go away like fertilizers. Fertilizers are temporary. They're needed and they're a must because you've got to feed the soil, but that's fertilizers is doing a constant thing. It's, you know That wakes up your lawn. You constantly need to feed and something you're going to be continuously doing, but humix, fulvix, uh, command, and aeration are long-term investments into your lawn. So I, I want to make sure those are categorized different and people are kind of understanding the difference there that when, when you see those product prices um, you're going to save money on the long end because you're going to need to use less fertilizers and nutrients better for your wallet better for your lawn and better for our environment we're talking win win wins here um, less water less likely to get fungus like likely to get chinch bugs on webworms so we're, we're benefiting all around so I kind of tell people if you really want to recover and get your lawn dive in there spend a bit Get the lawn right, and then once the lawn's sick and healthy, it's a lot less expensive to maintain the lawn. Um, and you always have issues here and there. That's 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 part of doing this, and that's part of having a lawn. So um, that's what's really important. But I really want to make sure these two things are separated and different with soil amendments and, and applying command to your lawn, um, as in and doing aerations, as in long term investments rather than temporary nutrients that get picked up out of the soil and then go away um which is what fertilizers are nothing nothing wrong with that but that's how we use things responsible um whew, okay i don't want to uh beat this dead horse here i'm good at that and then the weed controls i went over them quickly check my other stream and feel free to you know email back about that um but you're going you know doing all this nutrients unfortunately and doing the soil doesn't just feed the lawn. 
it also feeds the weeds. So you will be needing to battle the weeds, but spot treating weeds, no weed and feeds, no granular herbicides, do liquids, um, Avenue Sal, Sedge Hammer, those are good things. And again, that's stuff you're gonna be have to constantly using. I get between those two products, it's $300, but that's, you know, three years of use, $100 a year in weed control, even if that, not that big of a deal, but uh, will really work. It's better than buying a bunch of herbicides, cheaper weed controls from the store that don't work well and you don't see results. Then the weeds spread more through your lawn and you're even more frustrated and then you give up. It's, it's not worth all that. Um, in this industry, you, you get what you pay for. So spending more usually is better. Um, but again, I think I've covered that pretty well. And I think I kind of covered what I wanted to go over today. I'm going to give it uh, a couple minutes to see if anyone has any questions that I can answer before we go here and see if um, if I can help anyone else out. Again, if you want me to go over your lawn and send in pictures like this, turforganics 904 gmailcom It's in my YouTube description. Email me. I'm slow on responding, but I, I usually will get back to you before the Wednesday live stream. It may be just before the Wednesday live stream, but I will get there. It's springtime in the lawn care business and I'm down an employee, so uh, hours are long. Um, and and I'm getting it and I get exhausted quick, so I just don't have as much time to be on those emails, but I will get back to you before I can do these streams. That way I have something to go over. So if you want help and you want to get your picture done there and I'll give you almost an exact breakdown, the only thing is I talk fast and you kind of have to maybe write down as I go. Um, that's the only thing and that's why I do these over the live stream one it gives me content to do it can help other people and also it's a lot to just write down so it's easier if I speak it you'll kind of have to interpret it write it down gives gives a little work on your end but that's the best way for me to help as many people as possible because I can do it as quick as possible so I'll see if anyone has any uh, last minute questions here or there but um, if you want to email me some pictures feel free and I'll go over your lawn free of charge, just for the just for the joy of it. Um, I will I will don't mind helping you out at all with your yard. So and then again, um, I want to bring people here. No, here, and then here, and then oh, I didn't want to get rid of that. Oh well, here. So this is really good. This is, um, oh, this was an extension. I deleted the main page, didn't I? I sure did. So, okay, so I have it here. So UF IFAS Gardening Solutions. This kind of is a hard page to navigate, navigate, but once you get to the gardening solutions, this is a great source of information. Um, planting, pruning, irrigation, fertilizer, pest disease, weeds, things like that. And this is all straight from the University of Florida. So, um, Again, I mean, I cover a lot of these in my videos and save you a lot of the reading. So if you watch the videos and things, I always back up my information and make sure I'm, I'm, uh, it's everything's proper with the University of Florida. Um, but if you want to go on and hear maybe something I quite didn't cover or things like that, and you want to go see for yourself, um, check out right here. This will get everything you need need to know. Um, I kind of always make sure I take this information and. Um, some of it can be boring and daunting. Um, I don't see it. it it's in, um, it's in the, uh, my channel description, not in the video description. I should put it in the video, but it's turf organics 904 at gmail.com. Um, and it's in my channel description, not in the video description, but I will add it to the video description next time. because that's a really good idea. This is your great source of information um, right here um, with UF IFAS. And it's all proven, you know, facts. Again, they're not, you know, you're reading it, so it's not as great. And they're not as passionate as I am, of course. But this is a kind of where I get a lot of my stuff. Um, like I said, it can be boring and a little, it's the people who write this, you know, they're in the office and they do some field stuff and they're really smart and they have a lot of good information. It's backed by studies, but they're not out in the field. So they can't give you that 
I've done it feel. They can give you that. I've studied it and I'm really smart and we did lab trials or field trials and things, but they don't live it like we do. So I think I grab, I, I know this information a lot from my experience, but I make sure I'm speaking right through here. And then I think my videos interpret that well with my experience. So I think that's why the videos work well. But like I said, if there's something you can't find on here, you can go to here and, um, get all, uh, the information that you're looking for. But not as fun as I give the information. So again, I'll see. I'll give it a few more minutes. See if anyone has any last minute questions. And other than that, I'm gonna end the stream and uh, eat some dinner. Let's see. Oh, my music stopped here. Huh. Oh, here's a girl going turf grass. Oh, no longer available. That's kind of also a downside sometimes. So there's a lot of good information here. See, this is where we went over this earlier, but nothing crazy. It's just good, good proven factual information, which is always nice to have, of course. So, perfect. I think everyone's pretty set for the night. I appreciate um, everyone joining in. Always uh, appreciate the support. Um, I hope the people who uh, had sh whose emails I helped unfortunately weren't here today. Hope they had fun sifting through the uh, over hour long live stream, finding the part where I talk about their their video their lawn. But when they find it, it was very informative and helpful. I hope. And if anyone wants to send me anything in my YouTube channel description, I have the email to send it to. But next time it will be in the video description because that will help find it and there's no reason i shouldn't have it there so everyone thank you so much for watching i appreciate it uh it's springtime so get ready to have an awesome lawn through the summer keep watching my videos keep learning be patient and thank you so much for the support 